quick survey. Two questions. First question. Raise your hand if you believe that creativity is important, whether personally or professionally. Wow, almost everyone. Second question. Second question, I want all of you to stand up. Everyone. Okay. Given a rating between 1 to 10, 1 super not creative, 10 super creative. Where are you on the scale? If you are 9 or 10, sit down. Okay, some creative people there. If you are 1, 2, 3, or 4, sit down. Okay, if you are 7, 8, sit down. Wow, I look like 7, 8. And 5 and 6. Okay, that's how you see it. Okay, thank you. All right, this give me an indication of the demographics of the audience we have here. All right, two things we're going to do today. Number one, we're going to look at the misconception of creativity. What stops us from being creative? And number two, what can we do to increase that creativity level? To do this, I would need, I would, let's play a little game. I will need all of you to assist me. What happens is I'm going to tell you a story and at the end of every sentence that I'm going to say, I need all of you collectively say yes. Okay? Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Let's start. Can I tell you a story? Yes. About a boy and a girl? Yes. The boy named Jack, the girl named Jill. Yes. Jill got kidnapped. Yes. Jack saved her. Yes. And then they fall in love. And then they live happily ever after. Yes. Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause for participating. <laughs> All right. Same story. This time now, say no. Can I tell you a story? No. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> you see the difference? The first time around, when you say yes, you allow me to continue my story. And when you say no, you stop me from moving on. Why no? Good question. And that no is an experience of us getting stuck. Experience that before? We got stuck and not able to move forward. So what's the remedy? Many reasons. Many ways to do that. What I would recommend is to embrace creativity. And when I say embrace creativity is to use the language of creativity. Because the language has the power whether to limit or unleash our creativity to move forward. So the question is, what is that language of creativity? To do this, let me bring you back to the year 1990. I was, uh, I was 12 years old, living in a HDB flat. Actually, in Gela East, nearby, I was living nearby, with my parents, with my siblings, and I was sitting on the 12th floor, and one particular evening, after the rain, very cold, so I need a cup of warm water, I went into the kitchen, and I saw my dad. He was holding this little brown bird in his hands, and he asked me, can you get something to house the bird? The bird looked injured, but the 12 year old me, I'm more curious on the bird itself than what my father said. So I did, I looked at the bird, I stepped, fire, I stepped forward and I, I almost to touch the bird, the bird flew in the kitchen, flying around the kitchen. I was shocked, I screamed. My mom and my sisters who was in the living room, heard the scream, came in, they saw the bird, they too screamed. So the whole thing became a chaotic moment, a lot of screamings. The only person that was calm was my dad. He looked at us screaming and he looked at the other end of the room he saw an empty laundry basket. He picked it up, and within a moment of magic, he turned that into a bird cage. By just turning it over and scooped the bird in the process, problem solved. And as a child, it all me, I found that very amazing. What a simple way to solve problems. Just turn the laundry basket. And then, was the start of my creativity journey. Fast forward more than 25 years later, I now run my own trading agency and I speak on creativity 
And throughout the years, I believe that each and every one of us here are creative. The only thing, we may not be maximizing our creative ability. Why? I drill down to two possible reasons. Number one is because of the misconception of creativity. And number two is the things we do that stop us from being creative. Let's look at the first one first. I remember one of my sessions, before the session, one participant came up to me. He asked me, Hazri, I'm not from the creative industries. Why should I be learning creativity for? He got a valid point because he wasn't the only one saying that way. So to address this, what I did, I conducted a survey that asked people in my network. I asked them, I asked them this particular question. What comes to your mind when you hear the word creativity? And after one week, I gathered the results, and I found it very, very interesting. 33% said that creativity is about the arts. Music, dance, theater, film, painting, sculpting. This is 33%. And the balance at 67% say that creativity is about problem solving, innovation, improvement, making a difference, being different. This, I call it as applied creativity. 33%, 67%. What does it show? It shows while creativity is needed in the arts side, it is also applicable beyond arts. It's applied creativity. In fact, 67% is used more over here. The question is, what we do with that to use our creativity to solve all this problem? Comes the second part. What do we do that stop us from being creative? Let's look at this. Let's say you have an appointment. Are you ready? And we will find many creative reasons to tell a person why we are late. Or let's say a little five year old little boy asks us how babies are made. We will explain creative ways to tell him how babies are made by not telling how exactly babies are made. Right? We use our creative ways to do that. We use it subconsciously. But when we want to use it consciously, we got stuck. This is what happened in one of my creativity workshops. Uh, in creativity, there are two parts of creativity. The divergent thinking segment where we generate ideas, and then at the convergent thinking, we find suitable ideas. So one particular, one particular segment at the divergent thinking segment, brainstorming, I get my participants to list down as many users as possible of drinking straws. I told them to list down as many as possible, I give them about five minutes. And after about three minutes, a group came up to me and said, Hazri, we run out of ideas. Can you help me? I said, yeah, sure. So I went over to the group and I listened to their conversation. So their conversation went something like this. When someone said, how about we use drinking straw to keep sugar? Someone else would say, yes, but I don't think that's possible. And when someone else say, how about we use straw to use as clothes hanger? Someone else would say, yes, but it's kind of flimsy. So they have this kind of conversation. So then, then I know something was not right because they were having this, what I call the yes, but conversation. Yes, but. Yes, but. So what is yes, but? Remember the game we played earlier on, the Jack and Two game? Remember? Right? Yes, make us move forward. No, stop us. Remember? Right? So, yes, but is a disguise of no. Yes, but is a polite way of saying no. Now, recall, have you met that kind of people before? Or are we that kind of people? So what do we do to overcome this yes but statement? Instead of saying yes but, say yes and. And I learned yes and in theater, 
Have you watched musical plays or stage plays before? Some of you? Yeah? How about improv plays? Some of you, not all. Okay. Okay, the difference between stage plays, there's a script, people perform based on the script, whereas improv, people act, there's no script or minimal script, they use this philosophy of ESM to generate the shows on the spot. So this same particular philosophy I bring it in my creativity class. And we're going to use it today. Alright, so what happened is, um, to demonstrate this of using yes and, I would need two volunteers, two people from the audience. Can I get two people from the audience? I need two people. Okay, we have one person there, and we have another person there. Alright, yeah, come on, come up. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, put it there, coming up the, the stage itself. Thank you. Can I, can I get a mic? Is that mic? Can I borrow a mic from the back there? Thank you. Maybe uh, sir, you can still stand, stand over here, sir. Okay. <laughs> Alright, and stand over here. Okay, let's get to know them first. Okay. Yeah, so this is for you, ma'am. And this is for you, sir. Let's get to know the ladies first. Your name, ma'am? Nadi. Again? Nadi. Nadi. Right. And your name, sir? Angelo, thank you for volunteering. Alright, so what happened is, can you just step forward a bit, doesn't it? Alright, okay, what happened is, you're going to both of you have a conversation. Okay, and your conversation is very simple. You just say one sentence, and you respond with one sentence, and you respond back with one sentence, <coughs> and you respond back with one sentence. It's so just a one sentence conversation. And your conversation must start with yes and. So the same thing, start with yes and. Alright, and let's give them some scenario. We have conversations of going to the zoo. Alright? So we start something like, yes, and let's go to the zoo. And then you will say, yes, and let's buy the ticket. And then we see how the conversation going. Alright? Okay, who want to start first? Okay, brother. Well okay, before that, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Yes, and. Yes, and let's go to the zoo. Mm -hmm. and yes, and let's go get some tickets. Okay. Yes, and make sure we eat first. Mm -hmm. Yes, and let's include the drinks too. Nice. Wow. Yes, and don't forget the dessert. <laughs> yes, and let's get going. Nice. Yes, and we go and see the first exhibition at that show that starts directly after breakfast. Yes, and I want to have heavy breakfast. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much for hosting. Thank you for Thank you. So have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a seat. What you just saw is a demonstration, and all of you got to do what they just did. All right. Can I invite all of you to find a partner? Turn to the right, to the left. Okay. Name yourself person A or person B. Find yourself a partner, turn to the right, to the left, and identify yourself. You haven't got to know a chance to get to know as well. Okay. Person A, raise up your hand. Person A. Okay, person B. Okay, anybody, any person C? If you have three of you maximum. Okay, so A and B. Alright, what happened is, you play the same game, yes and no. A, uh, first person say yes and one sentence. Person B replied with yes and one sentence. And let's see how far you go for it, alright? So, no questions, just statements. You play this for 30 seconds. Ready? Okay, start with person A, person B replied, and continue. 30 seconds and go. Yes and. Okay, ten more seconds. Alright, well, I'll give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. What do you feel? You have a great time talking to your partner. Yes? Yeah, did, you, did you work together as a team? Did you build on your friend's idea? Did you have confidence with your friend? No. No, right? It's all positive things. What happened? Yes, and produces three elements. I call this the ABC of yes and. A, acceptance. 
when person A say yes and person B accept your idea, no matter what, he or she then B build on that idea to make it better. And person A responded with yes and again accept and build on. Accept and build on. In the process, a C element came along, which is collaboration. So when you say yes and this activity happens, and the outcome, I call it the DEF outcome. D is delighting. When you say yes and the other person is delighting your delighting you, which means no conflict, all positive relationship. E empathize. When you say yes and you are empathize on your other friend. And F, you are being flexible because you don't know what your friend is going to say, but then you accept it. And then it makes you flexible and adaptable, especially in this kind of situation. Things change so fast every day. So this is the outcome of using yes and. So this thing I bring it into my creative classes, and the outcome, same thing, more ideas came into play. So ladies and gentlemen, the next time, if you get stuck, instead of saying yes but, say yes and. The next time, if you need ideas and have no ideas, instead of say yes but, say yes and. The next time, if you are almost or in a conflict situation, instead of say yes but, say yes and. and. Because yes and is the language of creativity. With that, Harvey Idros signing off. Thank you very much.